Welcome back into Bank OZK Arena. We are getting set for the boys' 2A finals between Bigelow and Marshall. I am uh, excited for this game. It is a good 2A boys' game, and uh, we're going to get that started here in just a few minutes. I'm Wes Moore, joined by David Farrell. And earlier today, we had the 2A girls' game get us started. That was Mount Vernon Enola and Conway Christian. Close game, back and forth. Two-point game, three-point game. They traded leads over and over. But in the end, Mount Vernon and Nola made their free throws. They win by 10, 55, 45. It's one of those games that you look in the paper and say, oh, it was a blowout, double-digit game. Nope, this one was close until 50 seconds to go. And then Mount Vernon and Nola made their free throws, and they pull away to win by 10. When we come back, we'll give you the starting lineups, the keys to the game. And we'll get you set for Bigelow and Marshall. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. Okay, Frisbee, let's remember, it's one bark for true and no barks for false. Arkansas PBS is Arkansas's largest classroom. Bark! Frisbee didn't eat my slippers. Oh, Frisbee, how could you? No, I'm sorry, Miss House. I was gonna tell you, but it slipped my mind. Please don't let it slip your mind and donate to Arkansas PBS today. Bark! For every moment, for every memory, from that first car, to your first home, to your first child, and all the highs and lows that tomorrow might bring. For everything that matters most to you and your family, there's someone right around the corner dedicated to helping you protect what you love. Your local Farm Bureau Insurance agent. Farm Bureau Insurance. Real service. Real people. It's the two-way boys championship game between Marshall and Bigelow. Hello, everybody. I'm Wes Moore, joined by David Faraday, and we are getting set for this game. Here's how they got here. We'll start with the Marshall Bobcats, their run through the state tournament. And, uh, of course, it was an impressive run, or they would not be here. Starting with Marshall, they uh, took off. They uh, beat Westside, 82-52, a 30-point victory. Then it was East Poinsett County, another blowout victory, beating them by 27 close game with Earl. It was a nine-point game to get here to the finals. Now for Bigelow. Here's what the Panthers did to get here. They beat Hector by 39 points in the first round. Then Bigelow takes care of Bay. Close game, 59-55. And then they knocked off Rector 69-61. That is your matchup. Coach, let's start with the Marshall Bobcats. Who's your player to watch? Who's the guy here? Well, their guy all year long has been Peyton the Priest, their guard. And you know, for them, they need to get out and run it and, and, and push the ball up the floor and take advantage of their guard play. Yeah, he averages 30 points. He had 46 against Mammoth Springs, or Spring, and then had 25 points in the semi. So he is their guy. For the Bigelow Panthers, who do we need to watch? Well, their big guy, Javon Orr, they're going to have a hard time slowing him down. I'm sure they're, uh, you know, Marshall has done some things defensively to try to slow the big guy down because I know Bigelow's going to try to get it in there to him. Yeah, he's six foot seven, getting some college looks. The senior had 24 points in the semifinals. Keys to victory. What's Marshall need to do to win this game? Well, talking with Coach Smith, he wants to really push the ball. He thinks he's got to get out in transition and get easy transition baskets. And then, of course, they're going to have to slow down or somehow for the Bigelow Panthers. How are they going to win this game and celebrate a title? Probably slow down Peyton the Priest. <laughs> That's all we're talking about, it seems like. But he is their guy. Like you said, he had 40-something in one game in the state tournament. He averages 30. They got to somehow slow him down. Got to slow him down in the other guards. He, he's got a, a, a couple of teammates that can shoot it well, too. So the key to stop those guards. All right, we are set. We're ready for tip-off. Bigelow 
30 and 2. They've won 19 in a row. This is a team that's used to winning. They had three kids win a golf championship, and six of the players on this team played in the baseball finals. Wow. Well, they've got a little championship DNA in them. And how much does that help, Coach, when you got winners on your team? It helps a lot. I mean, winning breeds winning, and there's nothing like it. So, Bigelow's only lost two games this year. They lost to Wonderview back in November and Concord back in December, so it's been a long time since they lost a game, nine Team in the row. The Marshall Bobcats are 27 and 8. Their last title, 1946. So when you talk about making history, it's that's middle, making that's history right history. there. Yeah, we're ready for the jump ball. We're going to get this 2A boys game underway. The Bobcats aren't able to bring it down. The Panthers will start and have the first possession. Bigelow in white. Looks like Marshall playing a little zone, Coach. Started off in the zone and made him pay for it. <laughs> Bennett Wilson Bennett. makes him pay with that shot at the top of the key. A little token pressure from the Panthers. Marshall works it down low. Shots blocked, knocked out of bounds. It was Carter Alexander coming over for a little help. You tell me that they're going to have a block shot on the uh, first play of the game. I was like, oh, okay, Orr's going to block a shot. <laughs> nope, that wasn't the case. Nice little jumper right there from Bryce Griffin. The junior gets on the scoreboard. And three to two, Bigelow with the ball and the lead. Cross court. Not going to settle for a three until they get a good look and they get another good look. Wow, well, back to back threes by that young man. It's a way to start the game, right? That'll relax Bennett Wilson a little bit. Marshall trying to look for a good shot, and they do. They work the ball in the corner, a little short, a little off on that one, and Orr fights for the rebound, taps it to a teammate, and they're off and running. Tipton, no, gets the rebound, but he may have been out of bounds. Yep, he was. Well, I like the way Bigelow gets out and runs it, though. Well, and that's what they need to do against Orr, right? I mean, when you have an inside presence like that, beat him down the court. Marshall works it in, raggling with it, raggling up and under, but he walked. Size right there of Orr kind of <laughs> got to him, and he was trying to maneuver around Orr and picked up that pivot foot. Bigelow with the four-point lead, hit a couple of threes. Been Bennett Wilson so far. A lot of attention on Orr, so that should open up the outside. It should, and, the, and the, they're going four outs. So they got four guards on the outside, and they get it in, big man. Orr can't finish this one. Worked hard, got open there in the middle, and had a good look at it. Just rattled out for it. Griffin with it. Marshall, first three out there. Good rebound. Peyton DeFries went up and was fighting up against Orr. Just couldn't bring it in. Bigelow attacking. Orr with the rebound. Got a foul on the floor. Bigelow will keep it. You saw that time the size of Orr comes in and gets that rebound, and they get another possession. Alexander, a little give and go. Tipton back out to Alexander. There's Wilson again. Couldn't get that third three. We had a good look at it. He did. Wilson had 14 points in the semifinals, and he's already got six here in the finals. Full court pressure by Bigelow. DePriest brings it down. This looked like they were going to double him as soon as he brought the ball across. Down in the corner to Ragland. Ragland's three, no good. They hit the glass. Thought Logan Ward was going to be able to uh, bring that rebound down, but he was falling and just kind of had to get rid of it before he hit the ground and throws it away. Marshall pretty much been playing uh, zone in all the possessions so far. They've been in a little 2-3 zone, and Bigelow's gone four, up, four guards against it. They all look like they're willing to shoot it. 
But DePriest is keeping an eye on, on Orr. He, he's, he knows where he is at all times. Corner three. Little strong, but Bigelow's able to get the rebound. Tipton back outside. Get it back to Tipton. He'll th try the three. Marshall's able to get the rebound. Sometimes it's tough when you're playing that zone to get that rebound. They did a good job. Raglan with it. Raglan in the corner. The priest is going to set it up. Gives it to Griffin. The priest in the paint. The priest trying to get free. Kicks it back out. Griffin short with his shot. You can tell Bigelow is definitely concentrating on DePriest, so somebody's going to have to step up from Marshall. Yeah, DePriest got the ball in the paint, and they just surrounded him, and he kicked it out. It was a good pass. Teammate open. He's got to get his teammates to make that shot. Mm -hmm. Tipped it across court to Alexander. Down in the corner to Wilson. Wilson's already hit a couple of threes. He's going to try it again. And again, wow. the third time. Wilson has that look in his face. He's got all nine points for Bigelow. DePriest brings it up. DePriest wants it. You can just see he's wanting to get a shot off. Not going to force it, though. Gubby drives in, attacks, good dish, and the basket. That was a good play. Drew the defense into him, dished it off. Logan Ward gets the basket, and he'll go to the free throw line when we come back. Marshall trying to cut into this Bigelow lead. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. Centennial Bank is committed to you. Since our founding in 1999, we've become one of the nation's most trusted banks by remembering that you come first, by empowering our communities to reach their highest potential through our dedication to local charities, education, and exceptional service, because we are proud to call Arkansas home. Banking with you in mind. Centennial Bank. Member FDIC. New documents are being digitized every day. And every day, the DNA databases get bigger. Sometimes the most moving revelations come from the paper trail. Sometimes some of the most shocking revelations come from DNA. I think I found out a little bit too much. <laughs> That's what makes us special. The magical way that we combine genealogical research with genetic research. And we're the first program in the world to do that. Without your support, there would be no Finding Your Roots. And without your support, there would be no PBS. At Wendy's, we're focused on what matters. That's why we've made our hamburgers square. When you want to experience the delicious taste of Wendy's hamburgers, you ask, Square's the beef. Wendy's. Westmore, David Farrell with you. Two A Boys Championship game between Marshall and Bigelow. Bigelow's hit three threes. And when I say Bigelow's hit three threes, I should say Wilson has hit three threes. And it's a 9 5 lead after Logan Ward hits that, the 6 6 senior. Had the basket in the foul, the old-fashioned three-point play. You know, Coach, right now you look at it, and that's the difference in the game is a three-point line. It is, and that seems like that's where uh, Bigelow is going to take most of the shots. Marshall is 0 for 4 from the three-point line. Bigelow, 3 for 6. A lot of attention on, you see, Orr inside, number 20. And that's opening it up for Wilson. Wow. That is his 4-3 in the first quarter. He's got all 12 points for Bigelow. The priest gives it up, tacks the rim. There you go again, Logan Ward with the basket in the foul. He went up and challenged Orr. He got 6-6 six, six against 6-7, six, and that time Ward was able to win the battle. And that's a big basket for Marshall. Bigelow hitting four threes, and they're kind of keeping themselves in it. Back-to-back -back old fashioned three-point play possibilities. You think they're going to shoot them out of that uh, zone or are they going to stick with it? 
Coach Smith has to be thinking about getting doing something. Well, Logan Ward knocks down his second free throw, so that's two old-fashioned three-point plays in a row for him. He's keeping Marshall in this game. It's 12-8. Bigelow with some substitutes in, several substitutes in, but they didn't take Wilson out, can't take him out right now. He's feeling it, tries it again, this one off, forced it a little bit. That was a heat check, Coach. Yes, it was. <laughs> Marshall almost had the steal to Priest into the paint. He challenges Orr, and he's going to get the foul called. So that's two on Orr on back-to-back -back possessions. That'll change the game. That could change the game, and... Landon Priest did a great job of attacking the basket right there. He's been struggling, hadn't got a lot of touches. You can tell he's getting a little frustrated. Yeah, he av he averages 30 points. He had 46 against Mammoth Spring. He had 25 in the semifinals, and uh, he hasn't scored yet here. Yeah. I watched him in warm-up. He had a good warm-up. Well, he has a nice stroke. And you used to get a lot of shots up, and when you don't, you sometimes can rush yourself and get frustrated. Get a little frustrated. Okay, they've gone out of the zone to a box and one here. Macon in the game. So is Newmeyer. Macon with it. They've, they've got one face guard and Ward. Alexander also in the game. A good drive by Hobbs. Hobbs just into the game. They're going to call him for a charge. And Marshall, that's Raglan, steps in there, takes the charge. The Priest will throw it in. A chance to tie it with the three. After a fast start for Bigelow, Marshall just kind of hanging in there, hanging in there. Those. Two plays by Logan Ward might prove Logan Ward might prove to be huge. Kind of survived the storm a little bit. Marshall attacking that zone. They get it down the corner at the baseline. Now they'll work it back out. DePriest at the top. He'll take that three. A little short. Maybe a little deeper than uh, he normally wants to shoot it, but they'll retain possession after it goes out on Bigelow. The priest gets it in. The priest gets tripped up. That'll just be the uh, well, it'll be the sixteen foul on Bigelow. The priest into Raglan in the corner. Raglan drives baseline. Raglan crashes in. Got a little payback. Raglan just drew a charge, and that time he's called for the charge. Yeah, he did it. That was a good call. He, he drove it hard and passed it and ran over him. But you can tell the priest is really – he's trying to get himself going offensively. He's, want, he's wanting to dominate the ball a little more than he has been, and he's used to that. And Bigelow's doing a pretty good job of keeping it out of his hands. Good scouting report, but they knew what they had to do. Yes. Bigelow looking to increase their lead, work it inside, back out. They'll drive in, penetrate, kick it out. Shot's no good. The Priest with the rebound. The Priest tells his teammates, go on down the court. I got this. The Priest guarded by Wilson. The Priest has it stolen away from behind. Good snag that time by Macon. Macon up ahead. The basket's good by Hobbs. Hobbs falling down, able to make it. The Priest. On the court, trying to save it. He calls the timeout. He gets the timeout. Really a bad pass to the priest. He was able to get down on the ground to try to save it and call a timeout. Probably a little more erratic than Coach Smith wanted. We've seen a little uh, pressure from Bigelow. They stepped it up. Once they brought in Wilson and Macon, Alexander, Newmeyer, Hobbs, different group in there, and they've – Started they pressing a little bit. The basket, yeah. Yep, the pressure has affected Marshall a little bit. Here's a look at the last steal in the Hobbs basket. He's a little bit out of control, but he was able at the last second just use some body control and flip it up there. 14-10, Bigelow with the lead. Yeah. 
Bigelow st staying with their same starters this entire quarter. Or Marshall has, I'm sorry, Bigelow has been substituting freely. Marshall gets it in, corner, Raglan, he throws it to DePriest. But it was a little behind him, and they're lucky that wasn't a turnover. You can tell the priest is he's wanting the basketball in his hands. The priest back to Raglan, top of the key. Got Thanks. 17 seconds left in the quarter. The priest pointing. He wants the ball on this corner. He's posting up. Raglan drives in, shot, bounces around, and it's in. So Raglan gets the big shot. That's how the first quarter ends. All those threes for Bigelow, yet we look up. It's 14 to 12. Marshall hangs in there in the first quarter. You are watching the Centennial Bank State Championship brought to you by Arkansas PBS Sports. Broadcast of this championship game is made possible by the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Over 2,500 team members across 17 local electric distribution co-ops powering homes, farms, and industries somewhere across Arkansas. We are the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Power and people. Hands up, hands up, hands up, hands up, hands up, hands up. Let me see it, let me see it. Bounce, 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 bounce. Local broadcast of Arkansas PBS programming is made possible in part by Community Bakery. Scratch-made breads, pastries, cakes, treats, and locally roasted coffees served daily at two locations in Little Rock, 1200 Main and 270 Shackleford. Special thank you to Smoking In Style Barbecue. They're on Albert Pike Road here in Hot Springs, and they gave our crew food to eat. The crew is happy, and they are working hard for you. That whistle was very loud. And real close. Right next to us. <laughs> I hope everybody at home could hear that. Marshall with the ball. They trail by two. Trying to take the lead with the three or tie it up. Got Ward posting up down low. But look at the defense from Bigelow. Another good play from Macon. Macon with another steal. Ball goes down low. Left-handed hook shot, no good. Bigelow hits the glass. They're going to have Hobbs. Hobbs the only player to score besides Wilson. Wilson has four threes, so he has 12 of the 14 points. Macon had a steal and threw it up ahead to Hobbs. Hobbs hit the layup. That's the only two players to score for Bigelow. Coach, that was a wild first quarter. If you're Marshall and your star, the Priest, has got one point and you only trail by two, you got to feel good, right? You got to feel good about the first quarter. Kind of survived it. And if you're Bigelow, I mean, how are you feeling? Because, you, you know, your star, or he hasn't done anything. He's still out. And he's out with two fouls, but yet you do lead. But you have guys hit four threes, so we're trying to work around and get him some more shots. Game is a little differently than what we thought it would go. No right doubt. Now. There's the priest from about 17 foot. He can do that. That was pretty. Just a little dribble, drive, stop, pop, under control, looks smooth. So we got a tie game. Hobbs drives in, a little floater for him, too strong. Good rebound by Ward. Ward pulls it down, the 6'6 senior. Marshall on the run. The priest with it. He's calling for Ward to give him a screen. He goes the other way. Off in the corner. Three-point attempt by Gubby. No good. Hobbs has it. Hobbs wanting to run. Looking ahead. Little right-handed hook shot. No good. Hobbs there for the rebound. He can't get it. Macon with it down low. Macon goes up strong, and he gets fouled. I've been impressed with Macon. Macon uh, hasn't scored yet. But he's got a couple of steals that have led to baskets. And then that offensive crashing rebound there. Crashing the offensive boards. Their whole team is really doing a good job of crashing the offensive boards. i got to say, the Bigelow depth has, has been impressive. They've, they've brought in four, five new players, and they've they've kept it going for this team. I guess they've substituted four. They've left, they left Wilson out there. Kind of wonder when we're going to see Javon Orr again. 
He hasn't played very much this game. Well, it's tied. Would you put him back in with two fouls in the first half? I mean, I wait? would with two. I'd have a hard time him sitting over with me for too long. But he may be trying to survive the first half and just get to the second half and let him go. Ward with it down low, kicks it back out to the priest. The priest open three, rattles out, looked good, just didn't fall for it. You know, Ward had it down low, and he's so big, I'm like, just put it up. But then you throw it out to a wide open the priest. I kind of like that, too. Yeah, he threw it to the best player. Get it into the paint, another little hook shot, just won't fall. We've seen that a couple of times now from Newmeyer. He just can't get that shot to fall. It's a good-looking shot, but just rattling out. Kick, drive, Hobbs, three, no good. Loose ball, and Wilson has it. Wilson gets his shot rejected. Marshall with it. DePriest can't get it. Got the ball tied up, and once again, it's making with his third steal of the game. Make it all the way. He's fouled. He'll go to the free throw line. There he is again. Three steals in just four minutes of play. Well, Bigelow has missed four or five pretty easy chippies by the basket. You just got to feel like if Orr wasn't in foul trouble, and that was him, he would probably be finishing some of these. Yeah, I like the way how Newmeyer attacks the basket inside the paint. He catches it, and he uses his frame to get a, a shot off. And it's a, kind of a little baby hook. He just can't get it to yeah. fall right now. Bigelow's lead grows to three, 17-14 after Macon. His own press again. Gotta be driving in. Oh. No basket. Foul on the floor. It'll be uh, side out. Actually, that's the seventh team foul, so they'll go to the free throw line for one and one. It's big for Marshall. They got five and a half minutes of bonus on any foul. That's the second foul on Alexander. Free throws up. Rolls in. Good look at there at our uh, rim camera. Two point game. Off the front of the rim, but Marshall gets the rebound. Back to Govey. He's double teamed in the corner. Gets rid of it. The priest is in the corner, calling for it. He gets it. He goes to work. Kicks it back out. A little foul there. And Govey's going to go back to the free throw line. You know, Macon been playing some really good defense and aggressive and getting after him. That time he got a little uh, too aggressive and ran into Govey. Got a little antsy, but. I, I like that. I mean, you're playing for state title. It's probably not going to go to the timid one. Well, Coach, our question has been answered. Orr's back in the game with five minutes to go in the quarter. Govey now the free throw line. That one's pure. So he's two for three at the free throw line here in just the last few seconds. He had missed his only two shot attempts. So that's good for him to see that free throw go in. That one rattles out. Or battling for it. He comes out uh, out of the pile with it. Bigelow off and running. Going to get a reach in on Marshall. That'll send Bigelow to the free throw line. That's a 17 foul for Marshall. Nutt will go to the free throw line. Nutt had 14 points in the semifinals to help Bigelow get here. That free throw was good. It'll be his first point of the game. He may have some free throws shot this last five minutes with those teams being in the bonus and approaching double bonus. Completely different game than what we just saw with the girls game, the two-way girls game. They let them play. They, they would not call a foul. They I mean, they just let them play, and that was fine. Ward had it, thought about it, but he'll pass it up. The Priest, the Priest driving in. The Priest attacking, gets the layup to go. How about the body control right there for the Priest? That was a, that was a great move. He appears to be getting on track. Ward with the down low. He set, splits the double team, kind of sandwich, takes it up strong. He'll go to the free throw line. The priest up to 
five points after that layup. He's made both of his shots from inside the three-point line, but outside the three-point line, he's missed all three. Or we'll get another. That one's good. But he goes one for two at the free throw line. Lead is two for Bigelow. Marshall almost turns it over. DePriest with it. DePriest wants to drive again. He pulls up free throw line. Oh, it won't go. Hung on the rim for a second. Bigelow attack, no good. Or there for the putback, and that one oh. rolls in. Or's first basket of the game. The priest attacking. He dishes. Gonna call a charge. I think that was the right call, Coach. We'll get a good look at it, but I, uh, maybe we'll take a look at it when we come back from the break. It is time for a media timeout. We'll take a look when we come back. You are watching the Centennial Vegas State Championship from Arkansas PBS Sports. Hi, I'm Steve Sullivan. And I'm Ed Leon. Coming up at halftime, the Magnolia Panther now hooping with the hogs. And how we put the Arkansas into Arkansas PBS. We'll see you at halftime. Hey, I'm Rick Steves. You know, I don't go anywhere without my passport. And now, thanks to PBS Passport, you can travel with me and watch all 10 seasons of Rick Steves Europe and all my travel specials. This exclusive streaming service is just for our members. Not only can you see all my shows, but you can see thousands of hours of your favorite public television shows. Become a member today and get your passport. Thanks, George. Appreciate it. At Big Red Stores, we're always proud to sponsor, support, and partner up with many events and activities throughout the community. Among them, high school championships throughout the state of Arkansas. At Big Red Stores, our team members are always ready to assist you to make your visit with us a pleasant one. And at Big Red Stores, we recognize that none of our support or ability to serve the community is possible without you. That's why at Big Red Stores, you're always the MVP of the Big Red team. Big Red Stores, now more convenient than ever. Back at Banco ZK Arena, that's a good look at the charging call on Peyton DePriest. I think they got it right, Coach. Probably the right call, but, I mean, you got to like the way Peyton DePriest is, is attacking the basket. If you're Marshall, I mean, that's what he does, and you know he can put the ball in the basket, and that's a, that's a chance you're, I'm willing to take with him. David Farrell, Westmore with you. It is the 2A Boys Championship game between Bigelow and Marshall. Bigelow looking to increase their lead. They've tried the alley-oop to Orr. Orr's big, but not that big. Not that big. Turnover for Bigelow. Marshall looking to attack. They do. They go to the basket. A little dish. And you see the size of Orr right there. Could not convert. All the way to the basket. And Wilson gets his 14th point of the game. And now the tie up here at half court. Jump ball. Goes back to Bigelow. Bigelow, the defense. Coach, I was going to ask you this. Uh, Marshall is shooting 35% from the floor. Bigelow shooting 32%. Is it struggling offenses or a good defense that we're seeing? I think that both defenses has been pretty good. It's just where where Bigelow's making their shots is from behind the arc. So that's kind of the difference in the game. They're shooting it about the same. Yeah. Just where they're shooting it from. A little deflection there. I'd like to see that. Wilson gave the uh, Bobcat a little pat on the chest, like good job, good deflection. It's Kobe, he tapped. Little runner up high, Arkham shot is good. That's Tipton with it. Tipton attacked the big man Ward and just floated it over him. Kobe to DePriest, DePriest will stop. Off the back of the rim, no good. Good rebound, goes up strong. Missed the follow-up shot, tipped in, no good. Another attempt for Marshall. That one's no good. Finally, Bigelow with the rebound. Nut with that rebound. Marshall back in their zone. They get a hand on that one. 
A lot of deflections in this game, and so that's, that to me is an indication. Good defense. They're they're very active with their hands. Both teams are kind of doing it in a different way. That was a good pass inside, but it was a little unfortunate for Nutt. When Nutt went up, the uh, Marshall defender with his kind of his hip knocked the ball loose. Doby for three. Too strong. Good, strong rebound for Nutt. Tipped him with it. He penetrates, kicks it back outside to Wilson. Tipped him, corner three, no good. It's DePriest with the rebound. DePriest wants to attack. Pulls it out. Marshall trying to work it inside. They got that pass stolen. That's tipped him with it. Tipped it all the way to the basket. Tipped it, no good. Rolls out. Nutt and Tipton are there for the rebound, but Marshall stepped out of bounds, so Bigelow will keep it. Another steal for uh, Bigelow, Coach. Another, another steal and, and another turnover for Marshall. But I like the aggression that's coming from the Bigelow bench right now. And it's six steals on the game for Bigelow. Nine turnovers for Marshall in the first half. Nutt has it. Throws it inside to Wilson. Wilson will try that shot. No good. Good, strong rebound by Govey. Lead has grown to eight for Bigelow. DePriest kicks it outside. Baseline drive back to DePriest. DePriest into the middle. Dishes it off underneath to his teammate. Gets the foul called. Good play. And Tyler will go to the free throw line. Good drive by DePriest, pulled the defense, got it to his teammate for an easy shot, drew the foul, back on the free throw line. Rattles out. Marshall needs these points. Largest lead of the game for Bigelow. Rattles in, seven point deficit. Got a minute to go. Bigelow with the ball. Tipton brings it up past half court. Back in their box and one. Tipton drives baseline, back out to Alexander. Into the big man, Orr, and he delivers. Orr goes up and gets it, just turns around, shoots it off the glass. 10 point lead for Bigelow. Make a nine-point lead. I can't do math. DePriest drives in. Spinning layup. What about that spin, Coach? I tell you, he, they've got to get him going in the second half because he can take over this game. That's eight points for DePriest. That was a tough shot. 15 seconds to go. Bigelow looks like they want to take the last shot of the game, but they lose the ball. Ball on the ground. Got a jump ball, tie ball. Marshall ball. Marshall will get the last shot. That was just a bad turnover. Coach is going to put in uh, Macon. He's going to substitute here, put in some of his uh, better defenders and get Orr out of the game. Yeah. No need. Look, you survived the half. Well, actually, Smart you put play. him back in and increase the lead. No need for him to pick up that last foul. Last 10 seconds. The priest trying to get it, but they're going to deny him. Goby has a wide open three. It's good. That's how the first half will end. Big three for Marshall with two seconds left in the half. It's Bigelow, 28, Marshall, 24. Two-A boys state championship game is heating up. Coming up next at the half, Steve Sullivan and Ed Leon. You're watching the Centennial Banks state championship game brought to you by Arkansas PBS Sports. We on that next level. We on that next level. Broadcast of this championship game is made possible by the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Over 2,500 team members across 17 local electric distribution co-ops powering homes, farms, and industries somewhere across Arkansas. We are the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Power and people. 
Local broadcast of Arkansas PBS programming is made possible in part by Community Bakery. Scratch-made breads, pastries, cakes, treats, and locally roasted coffees served daily at two locations in Little Rock, 1200 Main and 270 Shackleford. The Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Over 2,500 team members across 17 local electric distribution co-ops powering homes, farms, and industries somewhere across Arkansas. We are the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Power and people. Hey everybody, it's halftime once again at Bank OZK Arena, but stay right here because we have plenty to show you. Jumping right into it, most towns have their sports legends and legendary stories. Magnolia's Darian Ford was definitely added to their legend list over the last four years. Let's take a look at a little known fact about his championship performance in the state finals last year. You may be surprised to learn that in addition to being an all-star basketball player, Darian Ford earned a 4.0 as well as all-region choir status during his senior year at Magnolia High School. Darian brings new meaning to the term student athlete. He's also an open book. What would you like to know? Well, you know, my dad said, if you don't work, you don't eat. So everything I do, I try to work hard and be the best I can be at it. He's a pro in what he does every single day. The way he lives, the way he acts, he's never late. He doesn't make mistakes, like mental mistakes. Just to see him commit to choir in the same way that he commits to God, the same way that he commits to basketball, the same way that he commits to uh, academics and to his community. Just a phenomenal kid, and so we, I got an opportunity to see him be on basketball. The strength that I have in academic is math. You know, I feel that I'm very good with numbers. Write the quadratic formula. Yeah. I don't think I remember that, do you? I started off doing multiplication numbers from, at my grandma's house, and it's just something that I feel in love with. I just love numbers ever <laughs> since then. Undefeated in his senior year at Magnolia High School, Ford came down with the flu and a 102 degree fever during the championship game. You know, the fever was giving him the, the heat and the chills. I think he was real sleepy, didn't want to do anything but lay in the bed. Darian still led all scores with 29 points and capped off an undefeated season for the Panthers. Most things that I thought about were my teammates and just helping them and them helping me and put me in the right position and I'm putting them in the right position to win state championship. I think it was fourth grade. Started to excel in basketball after we won a national championship. It just took off from there. You can see the hard work paid off. He's won the MVPs three times, offense and defense. He's got Gatorade Player of the Year twice. In his trophy case, there's a lot of MVPs in there. In November 2021, Darian signed his letter of intent to play for the Arkansas Razorbacks at the University of Arkansas. There can be little doubt that Ford is truly a special athlete of dedication, poise, and faith that one day might carry him to his dream. I want to win national championship. I want to win national championship, and I just want to better myself. Just be able to adapt to any situation. Darian is currently a freshman with the Arkansas Razorbacks. I'm sure we'll be seeing more from him. Now let's take a look at some of those students who made the cut for the Arkansas PBS Student All-Star Team. Here's the boys 2A, 4A, and 6A classifications. We're starting off with Justin Brandon from the Bay Yellow Jackets. Justin hopes to play basketball on a collegiate level as well as be an entrepreneur. He enjoys fishing and hunting in his free time. Next up is Landron Blocker with the Little Rock Christian Warriors. Landron wants to one day pursue college basketball. In the meantime, hanging out with friends or listening to music are a few of his favorite pastimes. Finally, we have Anora Boateng, representing the Little Rock Central High Tigers. Anora plans to attend college for mechanical engineering or pharmaceutical sciences and one day play in the NBA. He enjoys playing various instruments, including the saxophone, guitar, and piano. To see all the Arkansas PBS student all-stars, visit the Arkansas PBS YouTube channel or scan the QR code. Congratulations and keep up the good work. Now let's get over to Ed Leon and hear about some more Arkansas stories, Ed. 
Thanks, Steve. We know these broadcasts bring us viewers who may not be aware of how much we focus here on local productions. Arkansas Productions. I think we're unique in the media landscape in that way, from sports to public affairs to full-on documentary films. The amount of content we create here at Arkansas PBS that is relevant to your life is unmatched. Here's a taste. An Arkansas adventure like never before. To be a sustainable farm, you have to make investments for the future. And I hope they find a lot of good stuff. I hope they feel love. Hello and welcome to Talking Country. I was known on the West Coast as the Arkansas Wildman. <laughs> Amazing creators and entrepreneurs dig into their inspiration and see how they let it shine into the world. Got some microphones here. You can, you can do a little little song for us. Oh, the coat of many colors. Which one? You pick. You pick. <laughs> In my coat of many colors. The future starts right now. I made a reservation. In its own right, a beautiful form of art. We got to teach the new guy, or this ain't going to be around much longer. Is now. We want to be able to keep bringing you local shows that speak to life here in Arkansas. And you can support that by contributing to our local production fund. Just scan the QR code on your screen. If you're enjoying these high school championship games, if you appreciate our commitment to local productions, then become part of the team and donate to Arkansas PBS. And there's some awesome benefits too. That QR code will tell you how to do it and you'll see it pop up throughout these championship games. All right, Sully, I think that's it for us. Yes, Ed, but there's a lot more basketball coming up. Yes, sir. Let's get you back to Bank OZK Arena for the second half right here on your home of the high school basketball state finals, Arkansas PBS. Thanks for watching. The Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Over 2,500 team members across 17 local electric distribution co-ops powering homes, farms, and industries somewhere across Arkansas. We are the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Power and people. Can you see her greatness? When you attend her games, when you cheer her on, or when you participate in any way, you support your community and make it better, and you will see her greatness. Join us as we pledge to increase the visibility of women's sports in our communities. It makes a difference when we all are involved. At Everett Butte GMC, we proudly support our local female athletes and encourage you to do the same. See her greatness. It's now a session. Welcome back to Bank OCK Arena. It is the boys 2A state championship game. I'm Wes Moore, joined by David Farrell. Coach, it's been in, uh, well, here's a look at the stats. I, I was going to say it's been, to me, an impressive defensive performance for both teams. You look at these shoot, shooting percentages, it's been tough to score. Both teams have been active. Both teams have tipped a lot of balls. Bigelow has kind of changed it up a little more. They've full court pressed a little, played a little half court man. They've... Uh, kind of matched up out of his own a little bit, so they've changed it up. But I tell you, I think our keys to the game still hold true. I mean, is, uh, you know, Peyton DePriest for Marshall going to, you know, win out over Javon Orr for uh, Bigelow inside? Who's going to have the bigger impact? Coach, uh, i got to be honest, with, not that we're trying to hide anything, but um, there is some uh, confusion here at the arena on the score. We have it 28-24, as you can see right there. Uh, they've been talking all throughout the half with the official scorekeeper and then the stats crew. And the stats crew has it 28-24. And the official scorebook, that's what we go by. They're now saying the score is 29-25. Now, in the grand scheme of everything, it doesn't matter. It's still a four-point game for, you know, with Bigelow leading. So that's why if you're watching, you go back and – 
and look, somebody's off here. Somebody's wrong, and, and, and they're trying to figure it out right now. But I guess the, it really doesn't matter. But if there's any confusion with people watching at home, I want them to know, yeah, you went to that commercial break. We went it with it uh, into halftime, 28-24, and now it says it's 29-25. And you're like, wait, what, what happened? Did I miss something? Each team hit a free throw at halftime or something. Everybody got one <laughs> well, during the half. These uh, We're going to get to go back and uh, watch the replay of this game and figure out where the score got off and, and how it all got messed up. But I guess the good thing is nobody's losing any points here as far as their lead. And no one's lead is growing or uh, it, it's really not in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, a big I, thing. hope that's, I hope that's the right score for everybody involved. Yeah, it's still a four-point game. And uh, Bigelow has it, and they're trying to increase their lead. They work it in down in the corner to Wilson. He was the shooting star for them in the first half with four threes. Open three-point shot, no good. Bigelow there for the rebound. That's Orr, Orr with it. He's going to give Wilson another shot. Off, Orr crashing the boards. Another offensive rebound for Orr. Wilson drives in, kicks it. Not thought about the corner three. He goes to the ground, Tifton. Back to Wilson, that one no good. This time, they're able to get the rebound. Ward brings it down for Marshall. They had some good looks at it, some good offensive rebounds. There's no results. Marshall survives that possession. DePriest with it. DePriest had eight points in the first half. DePriest wants it back. He gets it back. DePriest drives in, gets fouled on the floor. Marshall will get the ball back. How do you get a priest going, Coach? I tell you, I think what they're doing right here, uh, just letting him penetrate. I mean, he, it seems like he can get to the paint with it anytime he wants. Or with the big block. That's not, not trailing the play. He drops it in. Six-point lead for Bigelow. It's our first points of the half. Marshall looking for their first points. The priest has it stripped. He's telling his teammates, I need you to come over. Come help me out. I'm getting double teamed. Somebody's open. He was trapped in the corner, but nobody was coming to him to help out. Officials are going to talk about something. Any idea what they're talking about? Well, they're both looking at the scoreboard again. Maybe the shot clock reset. There we go. Shot clock should have stayed at 28. Just got, got knocked you. out of bounds. Yep, they did reset. They fixed that. DePriest with it up top. DePriest uses the screen, goes the other way, dishes it off. Corner three, decide not to take it. DePriest getting bodied, now doubled. Three-point attempt, open, no good. Or there, battling for the rebound, stolen behind. Little floater falls, rattles around. Goby gets it. Goby gets it to go. Or with 15 footer. No good. Ward with the rebound. You okay with that shot? Yeah, I was kind of watching the big old bench and they're okay with it, so I would I would probably like to see him attack the basket there, you know, and be a little more aggressive because I don't think there's anybody out there gonna stop him. The priest thought about it for a second. Now he'll take it. He got bumped on the shot. He's looking. He wanted the call. I think he's right. <laughs> well, there was some contact there. there. Was, definitely was some contact. Inside, attacking. Throws it up for Orr, and Orr is fouled. That was a good pass from Carter Alexander. I thought... I thought Alexander was going to shoot it. He just lobbed it up to his big man. Orr goes six foot seven. He's a senior. He's a load to handle right there on the block. You know, Logan Ward's done a pretty nice job on him. Of course, the foul trouble limited Orr a lot in the first half. Orr with five points. He's one for three from the free throw line. He's got six rebounds on the game. Second free throw rattles in. Lee grows to five.
Dovey attacks. Raglan with it. Pull it out. DePriest. Oh, Dovey go to work. Gets a screen from Raglan. Gives it back to Raglan. Raglan shovels it off to Ward. Thought it was a good idea, but good defense from Bigelow knocks it out of bounds. Yeah, Orr had to come over to help, so that left Logan Ward open, and he tried to shovel it over to him really quickly, and help defense came by and knocked it out of bounds. It just seems like we're waiting on Peyton the Priest to bust loose, and it seems like Marshall's waiting on him to bust loose, well, Marshall and he's fully capable. lost track of the shot clock, they so did. the Priest had to uh, fire that up. Loose ball, Marshall comes up with it. Good hustle, the Priest with it. The Priest up, in. It's a three-point game. The Priest now into double digits. He's got 10. Kick it out to Orr. Little runner. No good. Orr there for the rebound. Had it for a second. Goes out of bounds. It's going to be out of bounds on Marshall. Wilson's going to throw it in. Orr. Thought, thought about it, was wanting to look for the lob. Couldn't get it to him. A little contact there on the side. Wilson and Griffin got tangled up. Second team foul on Marshall. Bigelow's only got one foul this half. Pretty clean half. Three-point game. Dish it in to Raglan. Raglan off the back of the rim. Good, strong rebound for Marshall. Here comes Marshall. The Priest with it. Throw it to Go Govey. Looking inside to Raglan. Raglan to Priest gets hit right there at the side. A little collision. I like how uh, Nutt was there to pick him up. That was good sportsmanship. Big collision. And the Priest looked at him like, well, dude, what's going on? Yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> so Marshall can get with him one or tied here. Big possession for them. Oh, we got media timeout. That's what's going on. We had a uh, stoppage in play under four, so we'll take our media timeout. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Championships brought to you by Arkansas PBS Sports. Broadcast of this championship game is made possible by the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Over 2,500 team members across 17 local electric distribution co-ops, powering homes, farms, and industries somewhere across Arkansas. We are the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Power and people. Local broadcast of Arkansas PBS programming is made possible in part by Community Bakery. Scratch-made breads, pastries, cakes, treats, and locally roasted coffees served daily at two locations in Little Rock, 1200 Main and 270 Shackleford. One minute. People would come from miles around to come to 9th Street just to see what it was like. I'm saying this was the Mecca of entertainment in the South. I want to play a whoop off of the South. Oh, yeah. We thought we was on top of the world. Man. Download the PBS video app or watch online. A special thank you to Smoking in Style Barbecue on Albert Pike Road, 2278 Albert Pike Road. Right here in Hot Springs, Smoking in Style, providing the food for our crew. Welcome back to the 2A state championship game. Wes Moore here with you with David Farrell. Bigelow leads it, 32-29 over Marshall in the third quarter. Marshall going to work, looking. What a nice pass off to Ward. Just can't get it to go. Spins out for Ward. I thought Raglan made a great pass inside. It was a good pass. Nutt goes up strong, and it falls. Mm. Basketball can be a cool game, Coach. On one end, you get a good look, and it spins out. And down here, another look, and it just bounces around and falls. I thought Ward did a great job of attacking the basket, taking the good pass, and the ball just rolled in and out on him. And down here, the ball just rolled in. Yep. Four-point swing. Make it a five-point swing because yep. the free throw is good from Nutt. 
35-29, Bigelow with a six-point lead. Marshall drives in, goes baseline, double team, finds a way to get it off Raglan with it. That was a nice shot. Close. You know, Raglan's the one who passed it up last time to Ward. So he, he said, this time I'm just going to take do it. it. <laughs> They're going back to the regular zone, which is. Time for Wilson to step up. Good pass across the corner. Three's too strong. Good rebound for Marshall. That's Raglan with it. Raglan providing a physical presence inside. DePriest kicks it out. Govey, three. No good. Had two Marshall players going after the rebound, and they could not bring it in. Thought Griffin was able, might be able to pull it in. That buzzer stuck. There we go. We got it turned off. That was annoying. Bigelow making uh, some substitutions now. I'd say Bennett Wilson is going to get involved in this possession. They've got out of the box and one the back in the straight zone. The drive in, deflection, good block shot from Ward. DePriest on the run. DePriest all the way. Reverse layup, no good. No foul call. Well, we got something. Oh, late call. It's a late call. Or it's so loud in here, I actually, Coach, we may have not heard the whistle. I think it was late. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to help the yeah. guys out. I'm hard enough on them as it is. I'm just trying to be nice. Here's a, here's a look at it. Goes up. He's bumped. There's contact foul, there. Yeah, yes. no doubt about it. DePriest goes to the free throw line. He's been a perfect two for two. This is three for three. That'll make it a three-point game. Marshall hanging in there. We just keep thinking at some point he's going to just have a two- or three-minute spam where he goes off. He's getting to the basket way too easy. He's got 12 now. Macon brings it up. Macon attacks, pulls up. High arcing shot over Ward is good. That's a tough shot. It is a tough shot. Ward is six foot six. He went up. The priest drives in, kicks it out. Corner three. It is good. Big shot that time from Ragland. Got a one point game. You can hear that Marshall bench, that crowd getting excited. Macon into Orr. Orr double team, kick it back out. Macon drives, floater off the side of the backboard. Marshall running with it. Marshall up ahead, pass it to Priest. It's tipped out of bounds. It'll stay with Marshall. Marshall's got a chance to take the lead for the first time in a long time. Big low, one point lead. Three. Good. Ragland does it again. Ragland looking at the fans. They're on their feet. 39-37 Marshall, two-point lead. Timeout, Bigelow. Good timeout. Good timeout. That was fun, Coach. Back-to-back -back threes. I tell you what, Raglan has worked hard underneath, down low. And I like to see a guy who's a grinder and scrapping down there, fighting for rebounds. Now he steps Get rewarded out hit, for that. Yeah. Now he steps out and hit back-to-back -back threes in a, in a big time. Raglan now has 10 points after those threes. DePriest has 12. Over for Bigelow, you got Wilson with 14, Nutt with seven, Orr with six. Macon's little floater a few minutes ago gives him five points. Two-point lead for Marshall, minute 12 to go in the third quarter. Here we go, Macon with it. Bigelow trying to get that lead back. Wilson, three, off the back of the rim to Priest with the rebound. Not falling for Wilson now. The junior came up huge in the first half with four threes. The priest yelling at Govey.
The Priest gets it back in the corner, making shadowing him. He'll just shoot it. Good rebound by Orr. That was the two big guys going after it, Coach. Make it. Still, no one stopped him. He goes all the way to the basket. Orr with wow, the rebound. Macon's down on the ground. He was hurting. I think he's okay. Yep, he's going to stay. Stay with it. Tie game. Big put back by Orr. Marshall drives in, kicks it back out. Ward to Raglan. Raglan gets it to DePriest. Five seconds to go. DePriest drives, pull up, blocked by Orr. That's the way the third quarter will end. We are all tied. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Championship Games on Arkansas PBS Sports. Centennial Bank is committed to you. Since our founding in 1999, we've become one of the nation's most trusted banks by remembering that you come first. By empowering our communities to reach their highest potential through our dedication to local charity, education, and exceptional service. Because we are proud to call Arkansas home. Banking with you in mind. Centennial Bank. Member FDIC. Thanks, George. Appreciate it. At Big Red Stores, we're always proud to sponsor, support, and partner up with many events and activities throughout the community. Among them, high school championships throughout the state of Arkansas. At Big Red Stores, our team members are always ready to assist you to make your visit with us a pleasant one. And at Big Red Stores, we recognize that none of our support or ability to serve the community is possible without you. That's why, at Big Red Stores, you're always the MVP of the Big Red team. Big Red Stores, now more convenient than ever. Welcome back to the boys 2A finals where we got a tie game as we go to the fourth quarter. Here's how we got here. Bennett Wilson had a great first half. Had 14 points, four three-pointers. That's DePriest, you just saw him. He's uh, racking up the points as of late. He's got 12. Back in fourth game pretty much the entire time, and now it is tied with eight minutes to go. Here we go. Eight minutes to win a state championship. This first couple of minutes will be real important. Yeah, I'm sure if you went to either one of these teams at the beginning of the week, say, will you take a tie game with eight minutes to go, then let's They'd go. They both sign up for that. Yep. Marshall starts us off. They'll throw it inside to DePriest. DePriest kicks it back out to Govey. Govey three, no good off the front of the yard. That's Macon. Macon up ahead. Layup rolls in. That's good. Some of the fans are on the goaltending because somebody grabbed the net and kind of moved the rim, but nothing was called. Bigelow takes the lead. Marshall with it. Griffin over to Govey. The priest fouled. Well, I thought he was fouled. He thought loses it. No harm, no foul, I guess. He still got the ball. The priest in between his legs. Kicks it over to Raglan. Raglan's hit a couple threes, a little hook wow. shot. Raglan has come up big for Marshall. Running hook shot. Ties it back up. Bigelow's making. Marshall in their zone. No? Orr's trying to post up, but they're giving a lot of attention. That was a walk. Carter Alexander moved his feet a little too quick. Marshall with the ball with the chance to take the lead. Coach looking through his notes over there. He's signaling in the play call. Macon guarding the priest. Now they double team him. He gets rid of it to Gobi. He'll take a wide open three, knocks wow. it down. Clutch. Marshall by three. Bigelow looks to respond. Macon, it's deflected. Kobe hits the three, then he gets the steal. He gets it to the priest. The priest attacking, goes to the basket, looking for help, kicks it back out. Kobe again. No. Rebound by Wilson. Wilson drives, pulls it back out. 
Good look to Macon at the free throw line. Macon drives in, attacks, no, or there, or lays it in, or does it again. That was big. I tell you, a missed shot has been one of their best plays. Or, get, or gets a lot of them. So that's a big rebound put back. That is Orr's 10th rebound of the game. He has got six offensive rebounds. He now has 10 points. 10 and 10 for Orr in the state championship game. One point game with six to go. The action has really picked up on both ends. I was trying to catch my breath. Yeah. <laughs> We're looking at the stats right now, and we couldn't be doing it without Troy Mitchell and his team. They do a fantastic job of providing stats to all the media guys, whether it's here for Arkansas PBS Sports or the Buzz doing the radio games. There's a good look at his crew, Troy, and his guys. have been doing it down here for a long time, and they do it for basketball, they do it for football, they do it for all the sports, and helps make our jobs a lot easier when we have these stats right here at our fingertips. And you look at the stats right now, Coach. Marshall shooting 38% from the floor. Bigelow 33% from the floor. Marshall 22% now from the three-point line. Bigelow 27%. They hit those four early threes, and they haven't hit any since then. And now Marshall's turned around. The three balls going their way. It is. All right, here we go. Marshall with the ball and the lead. One point lead. We've got five and a half minutes to go in this boys 2A state championship game. The priest is going to hand it off to Govey. Govey drives in, stops, gets a screen from Raglan. Kick it out to Griffin. Griffin drives in. His shot blocked by Orr. Back out to Raglan. Tipped away from Macon. Macon, another steal for him. He attacks the basket and the foul. Big play for Bigelow. That is the fourth steal of the game for Macon. He has a knack of turning his steals into points on this end, too. He is quick. He's now got seven points looking for eight. He got, got it. it. Bigelow takes a two-point lead. That was a huge play. A huge, big, big possession for Marshall right here. The priest looking to attack. Here comes Macon. He went to double. He drops off. Drive in. They'll dish it off. Or there for the block. Oh. I'd like to see that. I thought that was very iffy call on Orr. Logan Ward got the shot block. Here's a good look at it. I think the foul occurred before. That should have been on Wilson if he called it. Who they call it? No, they called it on Orr. Wilson reached down and had maybe had a foul. I thought Orr got all ball. There may have been a little body there. Needless to say. Could have been a jump ball. Logan Ward, when he goes down to the ground, Orr could have been upset on the foul call. He wasn't. He picked Ward up off the yeah. ground. I thought, like, yeah, that's nice. Ward makes a second free throw. Marshall makes it a one-point game. That was the third foul. They actually did call that coach on Wilson. Now that I looked up, they've changed it. Bennett Wilson was called for that foul, not okay. Orr. Macon with it. Macon drives, penetrates, Euro step, no good. And Orr there for the rebound again. I'm telling you, their missed shots have turned into baskets for them. Orr's doing a great job offensive rebounding. Seventh offensive rebound. Bigelow's lead up to three. DePriest drives, making comes to a double. Kicks it to Govey for three. Off the back of the rim. Bigelow with the rebound. Bigelow tacking the basket. Right in the layup is good. Wade Nutt. Wade Nutt gives them a five-point lead with four minutes to go. Time out, Marshall. That is the Bigelow fans urging their team on. Well, last minute's been big. They went from one down to five ahead. Quick. And it all started with that steal, Coach. Sure did. You think of making steal, sure what did. a big play. Turned out to be a three-point play. Steal three a three-point play, yeah. And then Macon's made a – Macon is making an <laughs> impact on this <laughs> yes, game because you look at what he's – eight points now. He's got four steals, but it was his penetrating the 
on this last possession. He goes in, gets the shot. Well, when he penetrates, the defense comes to him. That leaves Orr wide open. Yeah. Nobody's blocking him out. Orr comes in, follows it up, taps it in. And his four steals, I believe, have led to points each time. He's got something on this end off of a steal. Looking uh, for the points off turnovers, and yep, 10 mm -hmm. to nine. 10 points, and I bet that may have all, all been come from, a lot of those come from Macon. Mm -hmm. Four minutes, seven seconds left. We're going to have a, a media timeout here in just a second, but Marshall took a timeout to settle everybody down. They're still fine. If you're Marshall, yeah. hey, it's four minutes. You're down five. You're going to get plenty of possessions. The shot clock's going to come into play. We're in years past it hasn't. You're still fine. You get a basket here. Yeah, you've got the ball. Go make a play and go on a little mini run. Griffin gives it back to the priest. Priest drives in, attacks, drops it off. Ward was there, but he got the shot blocked by Orr. Orr gets the rebound. Here comes Macon. Macon does a little Euro step out to Wilson for three. Wilson, bang. The run continues for Bigelow. Wilson with his fifth three of the game. Griffin brings it up. The Priest has it. Need a basket. Griffin thought about it. Get it to the Priest. Drive in, a little bit out of control for Raglan. Raglan throws it up. Ward couldn't get it. Bigelow with the ball up by eight. Bigelow, corner, making, faked it, drives, kicks it. Free throw line jumper, no good. Look who's there, Orr. Orr was there for another offensive rebound. He's fouled. He will go to the free throw line. A chance to put Bigelow up 10. We'll see if he can make those free throws when we come back. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Championship Games on Arkansas PBS Sports. For every moment, for every memory, from that first car, to your first home, to your first child, and all the highs and lows that tomorrow might bring. For everything that matters most to you and your family, there's someone right around the corner dedicated to helping you protect what you love. Your local Farm Bureau insurance agent. Farm Bureau insurance. Real service, real people. Can you see her greatness? When you attend her games, when you cheer her on, or when you participate in any way, you support your community and make it better, and you will see her greatness. Join us as we pledge to increase the visibility of women's sports in our communities. It makes a difference when we all are involved. At Everett Butte GMC, we proudly support our local female athletes and encourage you to do the same. See her greatness. We on that next level. What a run for the Bigelow Panthers. It is a 7-0 run over the last minute and a half. It is a 12-1 run over the last two minutes and 37 seconds. Westmore, David Farrell with you for this 2A Boys Championship game. And Bigelow can increase that run right now. A lot of pressure on Marshall right here with a 10-point lead. Please go in. Javon Orr, first free throw is good. Good second half for Orr. He was limited in the first half when he picked up two fouls. Second half has been outstanding. That'll give Orr 13 points, 13 rebounds. Marshall needing a best basket. DePriest is wanting it. He's over here on the other side. Ball loose on the ground. Bigelow ties it up. Jump ball. Bigelow ball. 10 point game. March has got to get a stop here. They do. They need something to go their way. You can tell the body language, the big guys on the bench right now. And what a response by Bigelow. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking back when 
Raglan hit those threes for Marshall, and they took the lead. This place was rocking. You thought, oh, wow. It looked Marshall's like they were in trouble. It. Yeah. I mean, it looked like Bigelow was in big trouble. They responded, what, with 11, think, 10 or 11 straight? Four, it's a 9-0 run. 9-0. 14-1 run. They're going to have a chance to add to it with Nutt going to the free throw line. Nutt was strong with the ball. And look at the replay as he was getting bumped and fouled. And looked like he might lose it a little bit out of control, but he was able to keep possession of the ball. And ends up getting fouled, and that's going to be it for Raglan. I didn't realize he had four fouls. And look neither. up, they're taking him out, and he's got five fouls. That's good. That hurts them because he was the one that ignited their previous run. Played a fantastic game. Raglan will finish, finish with 12 points, five of eight from the field, two for three from the three-point line. Nuts free throw is short. Ten-point lead for Bigelow. They're talking to Orb. Maybe he's got a little blood. Oh, yeah, he's got some blood on his shorts. They're going to have to take Orr out. I'm calling me a timeout to get him, get him a pair of shorts. He's going to the dressing room to change shorts with somebody, I think. I wouldn't go all the way to the dressing room. Oh, They're man. not. He's going underneath the stands over here. That's exactly what I would do, too. Nut makes that free throw. It's an 11-point game. Marshall in desperate need of some points. DePriest drives and he throws it away. He thought his teammate was going to kick out. Instead, he kicked towards in, ran in, and just the miscommunication and the turnover. Thought he was going to zig and he zagged. Yep. Here comes Orr. He's got some new shorts. I bet he goes straight to the table, doesn't he? I think he should. Yep, yep he does. He, <laughs> he whispered in the coach's ear and he told him to go make it. Macon passes it up inside. Short little shot, no good. Marshall comes away with it. Marshall kicks it in the corner and stolen by Newmeyer. Nothing going Marshall's way right now. It's all Bigelow. And as soon as I say that, a turnover to Priest gets it and he can't convert. Bigelow coming the other way. Two minutes, they lead by 11. Now they're just dribbling around. Yep, just work the clock. No need to shoot. Wilson with it up top. He throws it to Macon. Macon to Newmeyer. Back out. Good pass. Wilson. Fake. Macon. Free throw line. Got it. Rolled in. Shooter's touch. <laughs> I think that's what you call it. Looks like one of your pitching wedges. Just hitting, hitting the back and backed up spins in. Spins back in. Newmeyer drives in, kicks it back out. Griffin has it. Griffin thinks about it. He'll take it. Short on the three. Make him with the rebound. Bigelow is feeling it now. Wilson gets fouled. He'll go to the free throw line. That's the 17th foul on Marshall. So one and one for Bigelow. Coach, that run is up to 12-0 now. 17-1 run over the last four and a half minutes. What an answer. And they kind of had had the lead the whole game. They give the lead up, and what a response. 17-1. Short on the one and one, so Marshall gets it. They'll come down the court. Jump shot, no good. Bigelow with the rebound. Bigelow turns it over. He was looking to pass it. He jumped so high, Coach. I'd say I never had that problem. He jumped so <laughs> high when he went to pass it, it hit the backside of the backboard. It did. Last minute in this boys' championship game. Dupree shot off. Macon fighting for it. Ward gets it. Ward, no good. Orr with another rebound. Orr up ahead to Wilson. Wilson brings it across half court. They can't dribble it out. They'll go ahead and foul him. Send Wilson to the free throw line. I'm going to grip him with it. Just kind of gave him a little, little push in the back to get the foul called. 
Just amazing, Coach. This game was so cool. It reminds me of the girls' game we just had with, with Conway Christian. It was just a – I mean, it was two point, three point. It got up to a five-point game at one point, and just a close game the whole time. And then in the last minute of that game is when it got out of hand and Conway Christian started fouling. And uh, next thing you know, it's a ten-point lead, ten-point victory. Oh. And Orr with another block shot. Here's Five a, minutes ago, it seemed like we had a nail biter. Yeah. Now we got people leaving. And yeah. No game's kind of over. That, that was insane. But yeah, Mount Vernon and Nola just hit their free throws down the mm -hmm. stretch, and they win by ten. But it was a four-point game with 50 seconds to go. And you're gonna look up, people will see the box score and think, ah, oh, that was a blowout. Same with this one. To think that, you know, it's a what a 13-point lead. Nut has a chance. Yep, 14-point lead. It's gonna look like this was just a Dominant performance by Bigelow and Marshall, you know. In reality, run Marshall them. had a lead, 45-44 uh, or 44-43. Mass substitution now for Bigelow. Or gave a big hug to some of the guys coming in. And now big hugs for Orr and his teammates. Bigelow is going to get it done. We talked about these uh, kids being winners, Coach. Three of these players were on the golf team that won the state championship. Six of these players played in the baseball finals. 30 and two. They've won 19 in a row. Haven't lost this year. Wow. Their last loss was in December. Wow, that's impressive. Wade Nutt, Javon Orr, Brandon Tipton, Carter Alexander, Bennett Wilson all over there on the bench. Marshall also makes a, a lot of substitutions for this last 20 seconds chance to get in the box score right now for some of these guys. Still a thrill. They practiced hard. and uh, They gave a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, too. So this is their chance to get into a state championship game. It's not the two lineups you expected to see at the end of five minutes ago. You wouldn't have thought both teams would have completely subbed out. Bigelow gets the rebound. They dribble down. The last three seconds will tick off, tick off, and there it is. Bigelow wins the 2A state championship 60 to 45 over Marshall. We'll hear from the winning head coach and the tournament MVP when we come back. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. The Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Over 2,500 team members across 17 local electric distribution co-ops, powering homes, farms, and industries somewhere across Arkansas. We are the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Power and people. Centennial Bank is committed to you. Since our founding in 1999, we've become one of the nation's most trusted banks by remembering that you come first by empowering our communities to reach their highest potential through our dedication to local charities, education, and exceptional service. Because we are proud to call Arkansas home. Banking with you in mind. Centennial Bank, member FDIC. For every moment, for every memory, from that first car, to your first home, to your first child, and all the highs and lows that tomorrow might bring. For everything that matters most to you and your family, there's someone right around the corner dedicated to helping you protect what you love. Your local Farm Bureau Insurance agent. Farm Bureau Insurance. Real service, real people. Stream the best of PBS on any device with the PBS Video app. All your favorite drama, history, science, news, and documentaries, all in one place. Watch your PBS station live or catch up on the shows you missed. Support your PBS station and you can get Passport, giving you full seasons, early releases, special collections, and more. Download the PBS video app or watch online. Can you see her greatness? When you attend her games, when you cheer her on, or when you participate in any way, you support your community and make it better, and you will see her greatness. Join us as we pledge to increase the visibility of women's sports in our communities. It makes a difference when we all are involved. 
At Everett Butte GMC, we proudly support our local female athletes and encourage you to do the same. See her greatness. Thanks, George. Appreciate it. At Big Red Stores, we're always proud to sponsor, support, and partner up with many events and activities throughout the community. Among them, high school championships throughout the state of Arkansas. At Big Red Stores, our team members are always ready to assist you to make your visit with us a pleasant one. And at Big Red Stores, we recognize that none of our support or ability to serve the community is possible without you. That's why, at Big Red Stores, you're always the MVP of the Big Red team. Big Red Stores, now more convenient than ever. Hi, I'm Jay Schwanke, the host of Life in Bloom. I want to thank viewers like you who make Create possible. Your gift goes a long way in keeping public television channels, including Create, on the air. Nailed it. Perfect. And if you're not a member, please consider supporting your local public television station today. That's it? That's it. Easy. Easy peasy. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Bigelow Panthers, they are your 2A state champions. Joining us now, the winning head coach, Greg Newmeyer. Coach, congratulations. I, know, I mean, uh, the first time to get to do it and get to do it here with, I mean, we had a lot of people, not just from Bigelow, but from Perry County and everywhere. <laughs> coach, we were impressed that Marshall made that run. Uh, Raglan hit a couple of threes. They took the lead, and then all of a sudden, you guys finished on a 14-0 run, overall a 19-1 run after that. What, yeah. what was said? What did you do? Uh, just stay what we're supposed to do. I mean, and to credit to them, they made a couple of tough shots down there. And, uh, you know, once we made a couple of scores and was able to turn them over, get some rebounds, and, I mean, the four kid for us inside, Javon played well, altering shots, and not just doing that, but getting rebounds and run outs and, and finishing. That, that uh, defensively, we've been pretty good all year. He had or had 14 points, 14 rebounds, and four block shots. Yeah, he's a difference maker. I mean, uh, we've only got two seniors, but he's one of them, and he wakes up at six eight every day for us. So that's a big deal for us. How about Wilson? Uh, the start <laughs> that he had, those threes. Man, he's like that. Uh, he gets going. He can shoot it, and he's just unconscious. I mean, uh, when he makes one or two, he's just he don't see a shot he don't like. <laughs> and sometimes that's crazy. And I mean, I don't know if y'all know, he's actually my nephew. <laughs> and his dad is our assistant coach, and it's my uh, brother-in-law. So it that makes it kind of special. I also got a son on the team, so it's it's good. It's awesome. A family affair, coach. Congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you. And y'all do a we good appreciate job. It. Coach, appreciate it. Congratulations. Thank you. We're gonna trade off coach, and we're gonna get Bennett in here. He uh, just got through doing some radio, and Come on. Bennett joins us. Uh, first, they're gonna give some hugs. This is their chance mm -hmm. to to celebrate a little bit. Man. Here you go, Bennett. Put that on. Let me hold that. I'll hold that for you, your MVP trophy. Bennett Wilson joining us now. He is the uh, MVP of the state tournament. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I, first of all, just your feelings of winning this oh state championship. Oh, my gosh. It's awesome. I and mean, we've worked so hard on this for all year long. It's just it's so exciting to finally, you know, get to the top of the mountain. It's awesome. How about the start that you had? Oh, man, just uh, seeing it go through one time is really a, a, a confidence booster. And so once I saw it going, once it, the stroke felt good and, and it felt better and better and better. So it was awesome. Yeah, you, you, had, you could see your eyes light up from over oh, here. <laughs> your eyes got pretty big. The basket must have looked pretty big early. Yes, it, it, it looked. Oh, it did. It did for sure. And the second half kind of you know started off cold, uh, but we got it back going in the fourth quarter. So yeah, and that fifth one that you hit was huge. Yes, sir. Uh, that, yes, sir. That gave the momentum back. Let me ask you about that because Marshall took the lead. Yes. They uh, had a couple big threes. I think Raglan hit a couple threes. Yes. And all of a sudden. You guys rallied. What happened there? Because you finished on a 14-0 run to end the game. It was really? a 19-1 really? run overall. Yeah. What happened after y'all lost Man, the lead? This team, this we, we got so much grit, and we've done it all year. You know, we've been down at half. We're a second half team. We have been all year. These guys, they all got heart. Every single one of them. So it was just awesome to kind of you know pull back, come back through. We've done it all year long. Coach and I were talking before the game about 
this team has a bunch of winners. You, you golfers that won the state championship yes, played for the state finals in yes, baseball. Sir. That winning sometimes is contagious. Does, it that, is. does that carry over to the basketball oh, team? Oh, 100%. And our girls as well. I think this is our se seventh or eighth state title appearance in three years. So, I mean, what's going on in this school is absolutely incredible, boys and girls, and I'm just I'm happy to be a part of it. Were you one of the golfers? Yes, sir. You I, were? Yes, sir. <laughs> I'll get some tips here in a second. <laughs> we'll take a commercial break. Bennett, congratulations. Thank you, Thank sir. You. Thank you, sir. Congratulations, Thank young you. man. Y'all have a good one. Uh -huh. Thank you. Here's a look at some of the stats from this boys' 2A state championship game. Field goal percentage, 29. Let's see, they are 15 of 51 for 29%. And then uh, 20 of 54 for 37%. Some good, free, you know, decent free throw shooting in this game. Turnover's not bad. Pretty good play. You know, I think the turnovers mainly happened in the first half, Coach. It did. Second half was pretty clean. You know, you just point back to what you're looking at right here. For, to end the game on a 14-0 run in the state championship game, what a, what a thrill for those guys. Just crazy to think that Bigelow just won this game by 15. Yeah, you're going to, like you, you mentioned a minute ago, you're, people are going to pick up the paper in the morning because that game was not close. Yeah. I mean, five minutes left in the game, we're thinking it could go either way. Yeah. Oh, well, five minutes left in the game, the other team that – that loss had was lead. leading. Had a lead. And big run there for Bigelow. You see the priest there. Or or had a huge game. 14 points, 14 rebounds, four block shots. Well, we're going to take a little break here. Uh, but when we come back, we've got Lamar and Salem, the 3A Girls State Championship game. That will begin at 6 o'clock. And then we will have the 3A Boys Championship we're down to the final two games of the high school basketball season. You don't want to miss those. There's only two left. Join us when we come back here at 6 o'clock at Banco ZK Arena. 